Hello, it's Keith here, and this is Lesson 9 of the platform-specific series of my 6809 assembly programming tutorials, and we've got a bit of a special edition here. We're going to be looking at 16-colour drawing on the Coco 3. Now, I've said before, the Dragon and the Tandy Coco are basically the same machine, and that is true of the Coco 1, but with the Coco 3, they introduced some extra hardware. Basically, all of your um, Dragon code will work fine on the Coco 3. It'll be pretty much the same as it was before. However, there's some extra chips, and if you interface those extra chips you can do lots of extra things and have faster CPU, more memory and a nice 16 color graphics and it's those 16 color graphics we're looking at today. Also quite interestingly the Coco 3 can be modified to use a 6309 processor. The 6309 is backwards compatible with the 6809 but has an absolute ton of hidden features that give it loads of extra registers and all kinds of crazy things. Uh, unfortunately, the 6309 wasn't very popular because when it was sold, it was sold as a 6809 compatible. And they didn't mention the extra features, they were all secret which is baffling because there were more registers, 32-bit combined registers and all kinds of crazy things. But anyway, um, we're not looking at that today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to use the 16 color mode. Let's go over to today's example and see it in action. So you can compile this example in the same way as the um, usual Dragon one. Of course, you'll need a Tandy Coco emulator that will support this. We're using this one here, VCC here. Um, and here you can see our 16 color Chibico and it looks very good indeed far better than the dragon ones which were a bit of a frustrating color palette for me so we're going to go over the code that made today's example and discuss how it works okay well the Tandy Coco 3 has a lot of extra registers. Let's have a look over here on my website. So there's a lot of extra registers that handle things like memory banking for the extra memory because all of those 16 color pixels aren't going to fit in regular memory. We've got palette registers and we've also got ones relating to the screen memory position, smooth scrolling which we'll have a look at in a moment and setting the screen resolution and also uh, turning on the Coco 3 hardware and also uh, a few other things like uh, setting the speed of the processor and we're going to be looking at all of those today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the CPU speed up a little bit. Now by default the Tandy Coco had a 0.89 MHz processor but the Coco 3 can double that to a massive 1.78 and bear in mind 1.78 MHz of a 6809 is a lot more than 4 MHz of a Z80 so um, it's, it's fairly fast actually and as I said before the Coco 3 is indeed capable of being modified with a 6309 processor and if we just run this minimal 6309 example here um, I've got the emulator set up for 6309 and you can see we have now two 16-bit accumulators here and we've got loads of other registers like the weird V register and things as well we've got lots of extra features so if you want to play around with 6309 you can do so with the Coco 3 Anyway, that's not what we're looking at today. So we've tur we turn on the 1.78 MHz speed with a write to FFD9. It doesn't matter what we write, we just write anything. If we want to turn back to, um, to slow-mo speed, we write to FFD8 and that will turn us back to the old speed. Now, with regards to the extra hardware and specifically the uh, graphics, we need to enable the memory mapper, the um, Z the 6309 is still an 8-bit processor with a 16-bit address bus and so like a lot of systems we have a bank switcher that switches different areas of the 64 kilobytes to allow access to the far more 256 or 512 kilobytes of memory that the Coco 3 supports. Now we need to enable Coco 3 mode by setting the top bit of this register to 0 and we need to enable the memory wrapper by setting bit 6 to 1 and we write that resulting combination to FF90. Effectively here we've turned on the memory mapper so that we can access the extra memory. Now the way the memory works is a little bit um, tricky. Um, it's not massively complicated but it was just a little bit confusing for me at first. Now as with most systems you have the memory map split into chunks. The you know, Coco 3 is very kindly splits into chunks of 8 kilobytes and each of these can select a bank of the true memory 
from the full range that's available. You can see the full range here. And so the pages are mapped from 00 to 3F. We just write a byte to one of these addresses and that will select which one appears in the memory map. And that's all pretty straightforward. The thing that I didn't understand, I got quite confused by, is this thing of tasks. There are two tasks, task zero and task one, also known as the executive set and the task set. And we have a two banks of addresses that we can write to, but these all have the same function. FFA0 is the zero range, and also FFA8 is the zero range. And what I believe this is for is um, it's basically for task switching. If you have a task like a an interrupt handler, which needs one set of banks, and your main program needs another set, or your operating system needs one set and your main program needs the other, or something like that, you would set up these in the two tasks and then you would switch between the two tasks as the running process changed. So your graphics routines might use the executive task but then your game logic routines might use the main task. So as I say that that's what I think it's about but I never quite heard it clearly explained in some of the documentation so it, it got me a little bit confused at first but fortunately it's very straightforward to work with. Now the way we're going to work with things is we need to use that extra memory to access all of the memory for the screen because the screen is going to be huge. However, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use just a single bank of the addressable memory and we're going to page flip in the part of the screen that we actually need to change. The uh, screen is going to be 24 kilobytes in size and we're going to page that in in eight kilobyte chunks. So there's going to be a total of three chunks that we will page in to access the entire screen. Now, when we want to select the screen, we are going to use FF98 and FF99 to select the settings of the screen. Now, depending on the settings that we write to these addresses, we can have a wide variety of different screen settings, but we're setting 256 by 192 at 16 colors because that's going to be the easiest for us to use. Now, what we're doing here with FF98 is we are selecting the type of screen. We're going to be using a planar screen, which is a bitmap screen. So we write a one to this bit just here. Now, the rest of the settings are defined by FF99 here. We're selecting the number of colors. A value of two is 16 color mode. There, there is no 256 color mode. We're then setting the bytes per row. The value of six here is defining the screen as being 128 bytes wide, which is going to be 256 pixels because we're in 16 color mode. And then L here defines the number of lines and we're using a 192 line tall screen because that's very consistent with systems like the Sam Coupe and the MSX. I try and use the same screen resolution on all of my games and things because it uh, makes things a lot more easy. Now, what we need to do next is select the screen base and we select the screen base based on the true 19 bit address bus, which you can see here. So what we're going to do is have the screen at memory address 60,000 here. Now, when we want to set the screen base, we don't write 60,000. What we have to do is take our screen base and divide it by eight. And that gives us a value of C000. And then we write that to FF9D and FF9E. And that selects the screen base of the screen that we're going to show. So effectively in real memory, our screen base is at 60,000 here. What we're going to do next is we're going to define the palette. This is defined by FFB0 onwards. And we're going to be writing a total of 16 colors. You can see the full range just here. These are defined by a single byte per color in this format here. There's two bits per color, two bits for red and two bits for green and two bits for blue. And the top three bits here are the high part and the bottom three bits here are the low part. And so a color like this is white and a color like this is a kind of dark purple. So not much range there, but you know, perfectly adequate for an eight bit machine. So we can't really complain there. So we're transferring our palette just here. Now that's all setting up the screen and the palette, but of course we're going to have to actually page in memory and then be able to write to it. Now this is all going to happen within the get screen pods function. This is going to take an X Y coordinate and it's going to calculate a memory address and it's also going to do the work of paging in that memory address so we can write straight to it. What we're going to do is we're going to take an X Y coordinate, work out a Y position in memory within the 16-bit addressable range of the 6809, but we're also going to page in the correct bank into that addressable range so that the write occurs at the coordinate we wanted. So we pass x, y as an x, y coordinate, and we're returning y as the addressable area that we should be writing to. Now, our screen is 192 lines, and because it's 24 kilobytes, and we're going to page in just one eight kilobyte bank, we need to split it into three parts. So what we're doing is we're taking the top two bits of the y coordinate, and we're going to use those as a bank 
that we're going to bank in for the addressable range. Now, our screen base was hexadecimal 60,000 here, and that is page 30. So we're going to effectively use pages 30, 31, and 32 for our screen here. Now, we're masking off those top two bits here, and then we're rotating them into the position so that we can add them to hexadecimal 30, and that will then be the correct page number for the addressable range that we need to write to to get some pixels onto the screen. Now, we're using the 6809 range, hexadecimal 2000 to 4000, as the window to that screen memory. So we're going to page that in with FFA1. We just write the resulting bank number to FFA1, and that will page things in. If you see here, FFA1 will page into the 2000 range. So if you wanted to page into a different range, the 4000 range, 6000, etc., you would use a different setting here. Now, we're using the executive set here, or task zero as it's called, and to select that, we need to write bit zero as zero to FF91. If we wrote a one, then that would have no effect because we'd be using the task set or task one. So we need to make sure we do things correctly, but we're doing that all the way up here. Here we go, we're selecting task zero just here with this bit right here. So that selects our bank that we're going to write to. Next, what we're doing is we are selecting the memory address. So we've stripped off the top two bits of the Y address here. The remaining bits, we need to multiply by 128. We've defined this screen width here, and we've defined that as 128, just in case we want to play around with some alternate screen modes, because we can, of course, change the screen width. So we're multiplying by 128 here. We're adding the screen base of hexadecimal 2000 here, and we're adding the X position here, which is in bytes. So that will calculate the offset for our graphic that we're drawing, and we're returning the result in Y here. So when this runs, it will return Y as containing the screen address in memory that we need to write to. So we're loading our bitmap in the X register, our number of lines in B, and then here, we're loading the number of bytes per line and we're transferring the bytes one by one, repeating until a line's drawn, and then we're using get next line to move down a line. Now, as I say, the screen is 24 kilobytes. We're addressing in eight kilobyte chunks. So if we go over one of those chunks, we're gonna have to move down to the next bank. And we're doing that just here. We're moving down one line here by adding effectively 128 to our Y position, but then we're comparing to the top address of the range that we've banked in. If we've got to memory address 4000, then we've gone over the banked range, so we're subtracting 2000 to move to the start of the next range in effect, and then we're paging in the next bank by incrementing the page selection register FFA1 here, which will effectively move the next bank in. And because our X position was unaffected because we subtracted to hexadecimal 2000, we will still have the correct X position and the Y position will now be pointing to the equivalent location in the next bank. So that will effectively get the next line for us and that's handling the problem for us. Of course, we could just use get screen pause as well to calculate and page in the correct bank, but that would be a little bit slower. So that's effectively drawing that Chibiko character. The Chibiko character is being included as a bitmap here, and you can see by the fact it's called raw MSX, it's actually in the same format as the MSX uses, so quite boring there. Now, if you should feel so inclined, you can create your own graphics using my AccuSprite editor, which is free and open source, so you can get it from my website. If you go to this Coco 3 option, you can save a four or 16 color bitmap here. It will export in the correct format for that system. So you can give that a go. Anyway, that's how we can get a bitmap onto the screen. But as one final bonus, I thought we'd have a look at the scrolling options. Now, if you look at the options we have just here, you will see we have a vertical offset L here at FF9E, and this can be used to make small adjustments to the Y line. Also, we have a horizontal offset here, and this can be used to shift the horizontal position of the screen. And by making some changes to these, we can actually scroll the screen. So for example, if I use the accumulator and keep adding 16 to it and writing that to FF9E, the vertical offset, this is effectively moving down the screen by one line. So you can see we've now got a software vertical scroll, which is quite handy. Of course, when we get to the limit of that range, we'd probably want to redraw the entire screen or do some kind of byte moving to move everything back up again. But we can do a vertical scroll there if we're using that, quite nice. And also we can use that horizontal offset in a similar way, and we can get a horizontal scroll just there. You can see we can scroll the entire range there. Again, you know, quite, um, 
quite nice features to have. Uh, the um, Coco 3 is quite impressive as far as 8-bit um, systems go, you know, it's um, it's quite nice really. It's just a shame that it wasn't very popular. It's also a shame it didn't come with that 6309 because the 6309 is very interesting and sadly never saw any mainstream use, which is a real shame. Anyway though, that's um, the end of today's example. As always, as I say, you can go to my website and you can download the source code for today's example. And you can also download that minimal 6309 example and have a play with 6309, I'm afraid. I'm not gonna be covering it in my tutorials because it's just so rare there wouldn't be any demand. So you will have to learn it yourself. But I do have a document on my website, which is a cheat sheet with the extra 6309 commands on it. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe. If you like the videos, then YouTube recommends them to more people who may like them as well. And if you subscribe, then it encourages me to keep making more videos and um, keep covering more and more obscure things like the Coco 3 and maybe one day the 6309. Anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you have a lot of fun with the um, Tandy Coco and maybe um, this is the first time you've come across the Coco 3, in which case I'm glad I introduced it to you. Anyway, take care now, thanks for watching and goodbye.